Um, let's dig in. Um, one of the most popular and common um, inquiries I get is about headless testing. It's something that everybody seems to be really interested in. And so there's a couple of different ways that are recommended to get started with doing it. And so, um, but let's talk about the benefits real quick for those of you that aren't familiar. So um, there can be speed benefits because you're not dealing with latency potentially of connecting across the internet to a grid or remotely to a grid and dealing with potential spin up times. Um, and then uh, potentially it's less maintenance because you're not maintaining like a robust complex array of browsers or machines. Um, and then you still also get the benefit of screenshotting. So effectively you get, you know, it's kind of a nice trade off. So, so easier to maintain, a little bit faster in some cases, and you still get screenshots. So you can get screenshots when there's failures. Um, and then uh, there's actually a lot of different headless browsers, and I'm going to talk about two different approaches. But this link here is a list of kind of every available headless browser um, with all different kinds of uh, rendering engines and, and so on and so forth. And um, I'll make sure to post my slides to the comp engine after the talk's over, because it's just, it's just chock full of links and some code examples. So. Um, so the first one is using a virtual frame buffer, um, and it's called XVFB is the common one that people use. And um, each tip has a link um, to where it is on the web. Unfortunately, the only ones uh, that are available on the web right now are just Ruby, but all the code from all of these tips has been open sourced, so it's easy to get access to. So, um, But uh, XF, uh, XVFB is, uh, apologies for the tiny font, it's, um, it's short for X virtual frame buffer, and it's an in-memory display. And so it, it really only works on Unix-like operating systems, so Linux and Unix derivatives. And it enables you to run graphical applications without a display. Um, and so uh, while also preserving the ability to take screenshots. So you'd use it um, because it's ideal for running small test suites on a headless machine. So if you have like spun up a Linux machine and running Jenkins and you want to stand up Firefox or Chrome, you could quickly just use XVFB to have it actually pipe out run a browser in a virtual frame buffer, take screenshots if there's failures, and then shut everything down. Um, so that's pretty much the use case for this. And um, option one for doing this is you'd have to start XVFB on a specific display port, and then you'd background that process. And then you would um, tell the terminal which session to use for that display port, and then you would run your test. So basically, you're creating the virtual frame buffer, connecting the session to it, and then running your test, and it magically finds where, to, where that is. And then um, it'll keep, with this approach, it'll keep XVFB running until you actually close down the application. Um, alternatively, there's actually a binary for XVFB called XVFB-run that enables you to use that um, prepend it for the command you're going to launch. So it'll start the session, do all the stuff for you with a display for it, run the tests, and then it'll actually close XVFB when it's done. 